Welcome everyone, my name is David Arroyo and in this video I would like to discuss the creation of the storyboards and the concept art for the feature film called Corbin Nash, directed by the extremely talented Ben Jagger. Um, so I'm going to guide you guys through some of the scenes, some of the uh, shots, and uh, just give my two cents on what happened behind the scenes and what techniques I used and so forth. So uh, let's dive right in. Okay, so first things first. What is Corbin Nash? Corbin Nash is a feature film directed by the very talented Ben Jagger. Ben Jagger is that young man with the sunglasses smiling away at life right there in that last picture. So if I had to summarize this movie into one sentence, I'd say that a rogue police detective in search of his parents' killer is murdered and reborn the ultimate killer. In terms of look and feel, it has this dark comic book noir type of feel. Um, and it's very gritty and down to earth. No extremely fancy effects and all that stuff. Not just in your face storytelling. So what do you say we get started on that very first scene, which is the opening sequence. Okay, so what you're looking at here is me uh, putting in the shots based on the original script. Okay, now a lot can change between the original script and the shooting, which is also what happened for the opening sequence. But these are the boards as they were intended to happen from the beginning, the original uh, vision. Here in the uh, bottom corner, you can see some of the footage that was in t eventually used. So if some of the footage is in there, then I'll show it. Uh, whatever is not being shown was not recorded, obviously. So this one, yes, is a beautiful shot from uh, Skid Row. And um, the thing about this is that when you do create, uh, you know, like a, a script or uh, when you're uh, drawing storyboards, you just have to know that things really can change over time because of maybe restrictive budgets or uh, certain things are just not available, certain actors, certain props. Uh, it all depends. The bigger your budget, obviously, the more you can do. Now, um, still, the opening sequence in its entirety looked really cool. So you have to imagine that there is a voiceover happening during this whole time. And uh, with that voiceover, you get, you get these shots, kind of like an edit uh, all together. Now, the following part that I want you to focus on is also part of the opening sequence. Now, here I wanted to show you this in full screen because uh, I'm going to show you afterwards how I tackled this particular sequence. Now, obviously, it's very fun to look at. That's one thing. But the other thing is that there is quite a lot of interesting info that happened behind the scenes. Um, for example, this uh, strip club okay, looked very different from the one that I had in mind when I originally uh, designed it. Uh, that's basically what happened. I designed a strip club in 3D uh, in SketchUp. Uh, way before we even went to shoot anything or way before we even had a location uh, found, right? This, this happened months in advance. And we kind of knew that we needed something um, that looked like, like this, basically, like what you're looking at. Now, the, the location that we found didn't have a catwalk, so there are certain aspects of it um, that weren't there. And you'll see that in a second when I'll start showing the actual uh, sequence that I've handed in. But all in all, the, you know, um, the final result actually worked out really well because what you also realize is that when you start editing and when you start um, doing all the final, you know, putting all the final pieces together, you might come to the realization that some of these things are too long or, um, you know, you might just have to change some edits based on uh, the voiceover itself. Let's not forget that there is a voiceover happening. So during this sequence, the opening sequence, it's basically Malcolm McDowell giving an introduction to the world of Corbin Nash. And it's important to know that some visuals might not uh, translate as well during that um you know, uh, during that phase. So that's why I assume that in editing that a lot of these things did change. Now I'm just showing you the way it was put in the script. So these are the originals. Um, and also you can see how I drew over the SketchUp file. Now the SketchUp file is very useful. Why? Because it was one in the same scene uh, from different angles. So when I have a scene like that, I like to just reconstruct the area quickly. It doesn't take that long, maybe half a day or so. And then I've got my um, my footage to work with, 
And the good thing about that, I can send the SketchUp file to the director, producers, or whoever has any creative uh, say in this, and they can look around and plan the shots as well. So that's, uh, that's the benefit of using SketchUp for storyboards. Then we move on to this part. Now this part I'm showing you side by side because it's actually one of the parts of the opening sequence that stayed pretty much quite similar. Not many changes happened, maybe some little things. I, For example, I didn't have this, which is a very nice shot that was added. Sometimes these things happen during shooting. You you know, you see something and you start recording and you add it in. A uh, very good, good uh, entry, I would say. Now you can see how some camera angles may be changed here and there. Here there's also one uh, little difference. It's also because of the location itself. It's a bit different from what they had to work with. So again, in my shots, you will see that the car drives off and there is an alleyway, uh, but the location itself was different, so they couldn't do it exactly the same way. Uh, here again, you see how uh, Macy, which is played by Fernanda Romero, walks up to or runs up to uh, Corbin Nash, which is uh, Dean Jagger, starts shouting uh, for help. And uh, again, here, you know, the shots that I had were different uh, from what you see here, but, the, you know, the concept is the same. You know, when it's focused on Macy, you can see that it's from the point of view from a Corbin looking up to her. And when focusing on Corbin, you can see that, you know, it focuses the other way. So here you can actually see how then he tilts his head because something is going to happen, um, you know, like kind of like um, a sense or something. And then the blind prophet shows up, which is funny because the blind prophet in the in, in the original script had a beard and all that stuff. That's Malcolm McDowell who plays it now, played a phenomenal uh, role as well. I really liked his acting. Here also a few changes, um, and then obviously the final uh, logo of the movie, which obviously changed for uh, the end sequence. And there you go, that's the opening sequence. Now for this next sequence, I want to show you um, some of the shots that were used in the final result. So I'm not going to show it side by side because a lot of things did change between uh, the actual storyboards and the final result. Um, this has a lot to do with the furniture that was laid out differently because it worked uh, better for the particular scene um, or, you know, the lighting or, you know, they're just as usual. Things can change a lot from storyboarding to uh, the final result and often it's you know it's a decisions made on the spot when you realize that okay this works better like this and that but still I wanted to show you this because um, you can see what these shots are inspired on so here these are the originals here you can see that the table was uh, towards the window uh, you know there was a, a very difficult shot of a chandelier so that is very difficult to pull off here is the ring sequence that you saw in the beginning uh, which was also shot differently. Um, and the objective here basically was that uh, Queenie and Vince, uh, which are both played by uh, Corey Feldman and Richard Wagner, um, are having kind of like a romantic dinner. Uh, you know, they, they're talking about uh, their, you know, their vampire things and their emotions and feelings. And then there is a very nice music uh, that comes with it because they do a little dance uh, as the conversation continues. And the scene basically is uh, built to uh, provide more background information on these two characters. Uh, in particular, more about Queenie, actually, uh, because she has a, a very interesting backstory uh, and how they met and stuff, which is another thing. Uh, in the final edit um, of the movie, a sequence was added about how Vince discovered uh, Queenie, which here was maybe discussed, but they added some additional footage. Um, now here also towards the end, uh, you can see how one of the hostages uh, wakes up and Queenie kind of like senses that she gets, uh, you know, excited, her fangs come out. Uh, then Vince walks up to the uh, captive and then uh, is about to bite her, and uh, that's uh, basically that sequence. Okay, now this part is more about the concept art, so there's no more storyboards. What I'm showing you now is uh, the final edit from the film, 
uh, footage that was used uh, for the fight pit, so which was a very dark place where people would have to fight each other uh, to survive. So here I just wanted to show you a little bit of the feeling, the vibe uh, that it had. So it all started with this shot. So I, it was kind of like a very quick sketch uh, to say like, okay, so this is what you want to go for. Once I got the okay, I started going obviously uh, more uh, like for a painterly look to match it a bit more uh, with the movie. And I also did uh, black and whites. So uh, I did obviously everything in, in, in color, but uh, I always like to double check my black and whites. This is an alternative uh, to that shot. Um, again, here you will see very quickly how I check the black and whites to check the values, the lighting to make sure that the balance is okay. And then uh, this one as well. Um, you know, obviously in the concept art, the colors are different. Um, you know, the, 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 the lighting, everything. It all depends at the end of the day, it's the director that makes the final decision here on my three entries to see like, okay, what can we do? What is the budget going to allow us to do? And uh, how are we going to make the scene work with the means that we have? Okay, and finally, I want to show you guys uh, a few actual shots that I drew from beginning to end so that you can see how it was done. Uh, I know that some of the subscribers on my channel are quite fond of this type of stuff. So guys, this is just for you. And uh, there you have it. So uh, the thing about storyboards is, okay, so when drawing, obviously, when you're like creating storyboards, it's important to kind of keep your feet on the ground like kind of think like okay in a comic book i can do whatever i want because money is no object whatsoever but um when you know that you're working for a film and you know that you know budget is limited or um you know you just have to know this you kind of have to have some type of sense uh, if you're working for a big marvel film then you kind of know that they're gonna be able to do really crazy shots and you can draw crazy shots if that's not the case what I do at least, I always try to push the envelope as far as I can, even if I know that the shot uh, is expensive because I might know like, oh, they'll need a crane for this or they'll need this type of setup. Um, I still draw it uh, because I like to give uh, the director options. Uh, I don't like to limit myself immediately to just like, oh, let's only use standard shots, uh, you know, not to complicate it over the shoulder only or, you know, that kind of limits, uh, you know, the imagination. And that's also why often you will see that storyboards, uh, they can differ a lot, uh, especially in my case, I like to really give, at, at least if I'm given the opportunity, uh, which was the case here uh, for Corbin Nash, um, I obviously had to follow the script, but when I was drawing the storyboards, it was not like I was told, do not do these type of shots, do not do that. Uh, you know, I was given a lot of creative freedom to try things out, and, and that's what I really enjoyed. Uh, so here, this shot also is quite interesting to, to discuss because uh, obviously a lot of you know that I do also often use SketchUp or other 3D programs, uh, but SketchUp is very useful also for storyboarding. So here, all I needed to do was just find a... Uh, you know, a 3D model of this particular vehicle that more or less looks like what we ended up using in the film. And I just, you know, with, with, with 3D, you can pose everything. So I post this in uh, on my iPad Pro. Uh, I have SketchUp on the iPad Pro. And uh, I just, you know, said, okay, more or less, the car is going to be in this angle. And then I imported it into here. And then you just, you know, start drawing over it. Uh, the software that I use for drawing is Procreate. So all of this, all the storyboards were done uh, on an iPad Pro in Procreate. And the reason why I use that software is because, one, it's absolutely amazing for everything. I really love it. I do a lot of my comic book work on it even. Um, and secondly, you know, the iPad Pro is just perfect. I can just go on the move and I can do, you know, I can go on the go and I don't have to be stuck to a desk somewhere. So that's awesome about it. And so that's basically it. Once I finish the drawing, I put it into this template that I've built. I add the text and I give it to the director. And that's it, everyone. So that was my contribution for Corbin Nash, which I am extremely proud of. Uh, feel free to have a look at the movie. I have provided all the links in the descriptions below, so where you can find it, it is available online and in a few select theaters, uh, possibly near you, so have a look. Um, and after watching the movie, feel free to give it a rating on IMDb, Rotten Tomatoes, even write a review if you got time for it, or if you want to share with the world what you thought about the movie. 
Right, so if you have any further questions regarding storyboarding, concept art, you know where to find me. You can always leave your questions in the descriptions below. And if you like this type of content, leave a like and subscribe. And thank you very much for stopping by. I'll see you in the next one.